Hello everybody, welcome back to another Woodworking Wisdom. Today we're looking at carving tools, we're looking at um, stropping and keeping it honed, um, so keeping a sharp edge on your tools. Um, we're not looking at the grinding um, or, or anything of, of reshaping, anything like that. This is really about keeping on top and maintaining your carving chisels um, and keeping that really keen edge. Um, we have done videos on shaping and grinding. Um, check out Jason's done one on Ultimate Edge and there's other bits that we've done on Tormek. Um, so have a look back through if you want to have a look at the kind of grinding or reshaping aspect of of um, the sharpening process. Today we're concentrating on um, on stropping or using a leather strop um, to keep these tools in kind of tip-top condition and that's really what I would recommend especially if you're using the, th the tools with the thin steels like um, with flex cut um, where they have the the smaller steels um, smaller than you know your kind of uh, carving chisels um, these can be um, you know, you, you don't want to introduce too much heat in these through grinding. Um, so, you know, and because and there's some little material, um, you quite quickly reshape the tool. Um, so we're looking at um, honing and maintaining today. Um, we're going to start off with a, with a strop. We've got a couple of different strops and a slip strop down here on the bench. Um, so that's the Connell strop. Um, you can see it's had a fair bit of use. It's got the kind of steel of the, the tool on there uh, with the mixed in with the honing paste. And um, we've also got the, um, the flex cut uh, slip strop and that comes with its own um, kind of honing, the, the gold bar. Um, the Connell one does come with one. It comes with a blue. Okay. So let's get straight into it. We'll start with um, a fairly, um, you know, well used tool in here. We've got a little gouge, um, quite a gentle sweep on this one, so quite easy to uh, manipulate and control. Um, so this is about four or five sweep on this um, on this gouge. Um, and this leather, okay. Um, so it's the kind of fluffy side of leather. If you're if you know you're using something homemade like an old belt or something like that, you want the fluffy side that's going to take on some of this um, cutting compound. So I'm putting the tool in the handle there. It's, you know, the same rules apply if you're using your um, kind of carving gouge, um, you know, something with a bit more of a, a solid um, steel on it. It's the same motion. Now this is the, um, the, the flex cut cotton compound. It's um, the, the gold bar and this is what's providing the abrasive. So if the, you're loading this onto the leather, that's what's going to be cutting the steel, you know, not the leather itself. Um, so, don't be too stingy with this. You want a bit of this material on the strop. Um, and I think we'll, we'll do a bit on here and then we'll flip it over and do it on the other side so you can see where it's removing the steel. So, um, we've got our bevel, okay. Um, nice, fairly straight bevel on this one. So we need to just bring the handle up till we feel that bevel kind of contact and you can kind of roll it on the bevel. Um, we're going to use um, a bit of downwards pressure and we're going to kind of roll across that bevel. Just being a little bit careful not to dig that edge into the, into the leather. So I'm holding it at a slight diagonal so I can drag off that cutting edge. And I can see that that compound is changing from that yellow color the way we started into like a darker um, metal. And we'll show you on this side so you get a better idea. So again, applying that compound. And then we can roll that gouge across and you can see where it's cutting the metal it's kind of dirtying the um, the leather okay and you can also do that on the um, on the flex cut a uh, flex cut slip strop okay so 
same sort of thing I like to use the diagonal here you got a bit more um, travel with the tool exactly the same process and you can see where it's taking that um, that metal off so downwards pressure and rolling on that um, on that bevel and I can see that's come up really reflective it's got almost a mirror shine on it um, when we're doing that, quite often as we're dragging that across and that um, compound's cutting it, it can leave what they call a burr. So you'll get a very slight piece of metal where they've, you know, the, the kind of particles have come across and they've left a little, um, you know, a kind of ragged end on the, uh, on the steel itself. So we can flip this over. On the um, flex cut slip strop, We've also got this slightly domed or kind of rounded um, leather here. And again, just get that in the flute. That's dragging on those two edges at the moment. So let's load a bit up on, on the side. And we can just use that to polish that inside bevel off. And that usually only takes a couple of strokes. You don't need to... Um, to, to polish all the way. Also, we've got the um, the kind of wooden uh, parts, and that's all different shapes of different gouges. So again, get some of that compound on there. And it's really important that we use this, and then you can just drag the tool. that will polish the inside face or, or at least knock that burr off okay so let's bring that up so we get a better look on the camera you can see we've got that kind of polished edge we've got a little bit of muck there where we've um, gone back over but you see how reflective and um, and shiny that is that's kind of what we're looking for and also on this inside face We've got that little shiny edge uh, right up on the, you know, the kind of cutting edge. Okay. So that's a nicely sharpened tool. Um, so important bit with that one is just to keep that um, that gouge moving across the surface um, at a slight diagonal, so it's not going to cut into our our leather. Starting up on this corner dragging it towards myself and then rolling up onto that other edge okay and if you're not entirely sure you've got the whole of that bevel we can use something like the marker method to color that and it's quite nice to do this on the last couple of passes if you've already given that a bit of a strop So we already had some of that compound on there. And then feel for the bevel, start dragging it towards you, and just roll. And if you've cleaned off all of that, um, that black marker, then you know that you're getting that bevel front to back and that you're, um, you know, you're not um, kind of just polishing the heel of the, of the tool down here. Okay. Try and keep everything flat. Don't try to, sometimes when we, we drag things towards us, we kind of lift our elbows. So let's go back onto the main camera here, um, just for a moment, thank you. Um, so we want to keep that flat, so we're rolling it like that. We're not dragging it towards us and kind of putting that um, you know changing the shape of that and we're not um, you know because what what actually will happen is that cutting edge will start to make contact with the strop and then we're cutting with those metal uh, you know with that abrasive and that's actually going to dull the tool so be really careful not to bring it up too high and roll like that we want to keep it flat kind of lock your elbows and 
drag the whole thing whilst putting in that little rotation. Okay. So next up, let's have a look at a VTOOL. Um, I'm going to go with a little 90 degree uh, V. Uh, you know, love this tool. Really great for all sorts of carving applications. Been using it recently on, on Lino. Um, so it's not very, it's not dull, it's not, um, you know, it doesn't really need a sharpen. It needs maintaining, okay, because I've been using it on the Lino. Um, it's not really blunted it. Really, I want to put an edge on this um, and put it back into storage. And that's the trick with all these carving tools, keeping them sharp rather than make, taking them all the way down to dull and having to regrind them. Okay, so same sort of um, deal with this. We're going to load up some more of this on the strop. And I tend to keep to one area rather than um, using the whole of the strop. We might want to use the, the other parts for different tools and things like that. Um, so I tend to keep up in, I'm going to keep up in this kind of top right hand corner. Um, and that way we're, we're loading it with um, the, the uh, compound cutting um, bar. And that's, um, you know, it's loaded in there. We don't have to keep applying it and applying it and applying it. So, same deal with this one. And let's put a little bit of marker on this so we know that we're hitting that angle um, just so. We've got almost three chisels or, or two chisels and a gouge on this uh, VTOL. So, same sort of thing. We're going to present the tool to the strop and just lift the handle until you feel kind of seat on, uh, on, the, um, on the strop. We're going to drag that towards me and I can see straight away it's knocked off of that, um, that bit of marker pen. So we know we're, we're very close to our angle. You can see not sure if it's coming up great on camera, but the the mark that it's leaving is pretty much the width of the bevel. Okay, so we've got our bevel here, and that's pretty much covering the whole of that that bevel. So get that angle, and f you know, kind of take note of where your arms are. Um, that we don't want really want to change. Um, our angle with our elbows or our wrists. So I'm kind of locking all of that in. A few strokes towards us. And then I'm going to flip it over and do the other side. So we're almost the other one, the other side of that kind of flat chisel shape. Using a fair bit of pressure. Don't be scared to, um, you know, don't go too light with it or you're not just not going to take much material off. Okay, so a few strokes on the other side. So we've got those nice polishes on these two flats, and now we've just got that middle bit to um, you know, consider. So I'm going to start um, with it on its kind of left wing, if you will, um, and again we're going to seat it on that bevel, and just as we kind of drag it towards us, we're going to turn the gouge or V tool over onto that other wing. Okay? So trying to keep that same angle, maintain that, and just roll over, which is essentially a little kind of U-shaped gouge at the bottom. Okay. Um, and you'd probably need to do this to keep this really sharp. You probably want to do that kind of every 15 minutes, half an hour, depending on what you're kind of working on. Um, but yeah, we've got that nice polish all over the bow. You can see how reflective that is. Um, you can see it on that little midsection, um, that little kind of U shape on the gouge. And you can see it on this wing here. Really nice high polish. Um, the 90 degree one, you could use the side of the strop. 
So, you know, we've got a 90 degree here. Um, so you could put that up on edge, put a bit of that compound on there. And just remove the burr like that. I like to revisit with a couple of strokes. Once I've um, polished the, the burr off there, um, and then, you know, we'll get a really nice keen edge on that. Um, same thing on the um, the flex cut s slip strop. I'm really struggling with that today. It's too many syllables or something. Um, on here, again, we've got those kind of profiles. Um, we've got our kind of 90 degree one there. Um, and our chisel's going to sit really nicely. Um, so again, if you wanted to polish that, if you've got a bit more work to do, we want a bit of our compound. And that compound should last you ages. But you can see that color change. Straight away it's removing the steel. So you can sharpen on there. Flip it over and you've got your kind of leather strop on the back. So that's how we kind of do the, the, the V tool. Same thing with the 70 degree. Um, we want to, you know, we've got slightly larger wings on this one. Um, so we can again find that spot. Do probably about 10 strokes on that side, 10 on there, and then you've got your little middle bit to kind of roll. Okay. Um, that won't work on the, the edge there, that uh, angle's too acute, the, slot won't, the strop won't just fit in there. Um, but you could use a slip stone up in there, or if you've got your um, slip strop, there is actually a 70 degree one on there as well to, um, to, to remove the bear. Good. So that's our... Um, a couple of bits on the different shapes. Um, some of these are quite a lot tighter. So the one that we did before um, was a quite a open um, flute. So this was the one we did before. That's a kind of um, about four or five sweep. Um, now this one here, I'm not sure if you can see, it's a lot tighter. It's about 11 sweep. Um, and same deal, we want to use our strop, get a bit of that polishing compound on there. And there's just a bit further to travel with this one. So you may want to use more of the, of the strop come down a bit further. So up on that wing, a slight diagonal, and I'm going to start dragging that towards me and just twist as we go. And you should see it leave a little kind of darker trail. That's the material coming off of the, of the knife. And it's a very small amount. It's hardly taking anything off. So it's going to take a long time. You know, if you're, um, if especially with the V tool, um, it's going to take a long time to kind of throw that out of shape. Okay, so those kind of U-shaped gouges, um, V-tools are really easy to, to maintain. So let's pop that one away. Now you may not have your um, own slip strop at home. This is, um, you know, lots of different shapes um, for all the different gouges here. Again, if you've got something that's tighter like that, there's going to be a shape on that um, slip strop to sh to um, to you know, marry up with it and, um, and get that inside face uh, or flute polished. Okay, so fairly simple with the, um, with the slip strop there and the, the kind of Connell strop. Um, something else I just want to show you. Oh, actually, before we move on, this is great for carving knives as well. Um, again, we could use either one of these um, strops. Um, 
same sort of thing. We're going to find the bevel, rock the knife back and forth till we find that, um, that bevel there, and we just drag it towards us. So the, the cutting edge is always kind of trailing. It's never, you know, you never want to go this way and cut into the, um, into the material. And if you don't want to do the other side, just turn the knife over. Again, I'm going to put a bit of downwards pressure on here. And um, just push it away. And again, that's just going to keep those knives really sharp. And you want to do about the same amount of strokes on, on both sides of the, of the bevel. Um, something else I just wanted to show you over here. Let's come over to our camera three. Um, so, that's just a piece of lime. Um, again, you could use a piece of wood, you know, the, that is just a piece of timber. Um, if you wanted to, say, do the inside of your VTOL, of the, the 90 degree one, we can use the edge or the corner of a piece of timber, load it up with your um, cutting compound. That's going to get in there really nicely. And, um, and polish those faces. Okay, you can see again, it's just leaving a slight amount of material. And you just keep working that until you're happy that you've got right into that um, little corner. Um, another thing you can do, um, you know, if you haven't got a leather strop, you can use just a piece of timber and just cut a shape into it. So you're using the gouge that you're going to use, uh, that you're going to be um, sharpening, you're using that to give you the shape of the gouge perfectly. It's not going to cut any other shape apart from the shape it, um, you know, the shape it is. So now we've got a, um, a little furrow in there that kind of perfectly matches the shape of the tool. I like to just run off the little edges here. Sometimes the wings just touch on before anything else. So let's catch in with the grain that way. So I'm coming back the other direction just to remove that. Good. And I can see um, the, the, where the cutting angle is with this one. It's perfectly matching the bottom of that gouge. Then you get your honing paste. And you can use that to perfectly replicate the shape of the tool. And this is a really nice way um, you want to do it fairly early on, uh, while your gouges and chisels are all nice and sharp, to cut the shape of the, um, the gouge, and then use your honing paste to apply it in there. And that's going to work with all these tools as well. Um, if you've got something with a much more kind of open, gentle sweep, so we want to carve this direction because of the grain. So we can just start to build up a little shape. Again, give it a bit of that honing paste or um, honing button. You can see right the way across that. Um, that little furrow or little dip, we're getting all right across the width of the tool. Um, and that's just by, you know, using the tool itself to create a profile on the piece of wood and then using 
that honing uh, paste. And that's the, the pores of the wood's going to take this on. And then, you know, you've got yourself a little kind of sharpening station. And you could do that with all your tools. Um, quite often people will put the shape of the tool next to what it is, you know, next to the, um, the kind of uh, bit that you're going to use to sharpen. And then you can quickly reference Right, that's that one. Or that one there is con correspond to this tool. Okay, let me just tip that up so you can have a, um, you can see what we're talking about. So using the tool itself um, to, to make the shape, um, and then a quick glance, you can say, right, that's that one. We can drag back on there. And also, you can round over the edges of these. Um, I do like the, the flex cut um, slip strop um, that has all those profiles on there. That's going to save you a whole bunch of time um, for that internal um, flute. Um, but if you've not got a, a bigger strop or um, you want to use something like this, it's, it's really easy and um, you know, just simple just to make something like that yourself. So that's about it really, um, quite short and sweet that one. Um, that same trick will work for your V-tools, um, just again just start removing material. Um, but really the key thing with all of this is, um, like we said at the beginning, to keep them sharp, to keep them maintained. And I would usually do this after a, a kind of carving session using different chisels, um, but put them away when they're nice and sharp. Don't you know? Sometimes it's a bit of a chore as well. If you um, you want to sit down to carve, um, or you've been struck by inspiration, you want to sit down and kind of get straight into things. Sometimes the the sharpening process can be a little bit of a chore. So I like to do that at the end of um, you know at the end of your uh, day's carving, or um, you know keep it maintained if you're doing a. Uh, um, long periods of carving, um, you know, drop into this, and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't take long. Although we're taking a, a while to explain it, there, really, it's just, you know, a few strokes. Um, a few strokes. Let's go on to camera three. Okay, sorry, our camera went out there. Just a few strokes to kind of refresh the edge. Um, you know, you don't have to go for a full sharpen. Um, quite often, just a, a little hone up. On um, on your strop will um, re kind of restore that edge, and you you know away you go. So that's about it, really. Um, again, thanks for joining us today. Um, we've got a question and answer session coming up where we've got all three of us in the room. So it's myself, uh, Colwyn, and Jason. Um, if you have any uh, questions, just drop them in. Um, drop them in the comments here, or send them to our woodworking wisdom at axminstertools.com, uh, um, and we're going to try and answer lots of little um, questions and, and you know ideas, or, or maybe just kind of throw it open to conversation of, of you know kind of future projects and things like that. Um, again, thanks for joining us on woodworking wisdom. We'll see you again soon.